welcome. Welcome to this day of mixed emotions. But I'm just glad to be standing here and not sitting at home watching it from TV, as I was last week at All Saints. So uh, we're grateful for little things. But a really big welcome. This is not a normal day. We don't. We only, we only twice a year these days have a bouncy castle <laughs> in our grounds on a Sunday. Um, and that will be up uh, later. Early birds have been enjoying that after this morning service. But we've got a different morning this morning uh, because we are saying farewell to the Myers family and all of that will come later. And we've also got our APCM, our annual church meeting. So timings are... <laughs> this is the plan. We've got about a 45-minute service. The Pathfinders will be staying in for the whole of that service so that actually they can be part of praying for Alice and the family. Um, uh, which we'll do at the end of that. The children will go out about 10, 15 minutes in um, to the service, um, and they will stay out. The children will stay out for the whole of the APCM as well and just go and give Helen a big thank you and a big cake after the APCM because it's a long morning for them this morning. The Pathfinders will go out to Pathfinders for the APCM at about quarter past uh, 11, and they will have a bit of a farewell for Alice in Pathfinders too there. The APCM will take about an hour, so about 12.15, 12.20, we are then going to um, disperse for games and for food, and all sorts of games are going to happen outside, um, and we'll explain that a bit later. And then about 1.30, we'll be having speeches in here, and then tidy up and cry. No, finish. <laughs> Um, so, that's the plan, but God may change it. A few uh, notices, first of all, um, as we... Um, as we uh, go, um, thank you so much all those people who've taken Easter leaflets away uh, already. Um, I was really glad when I returned yesterday to find that there weren't that many bundles left, but there are still some bundles. Uh, particularly the smaller roads, which we never know where they are. So please go and take them, uh, have a mystery tour of where those smaller roads are, enjoy finding out where they are, praying for the houses as you deliver them, and uh, make sure you uh, grab one for yourself. And if you've got somewhere where you can drop those off in town somewhere, then please do take a whole load. We've got loads more than we need for that. Um, Easter services are on the back of the Easter leaflet. Uh, it, next Sunday is Palm Sunday and the start of Holy Week. It's rather catching up on me. Um, but it's going to be fine. Um, and uh, the few uh, different services there, particularly, you know, uh, next... Um, have I got a slide on this? No. Um, the the Maundy Thursday uh, is going to be a bit of an extravaganza on Maundy Thursday. We're going to be up at All Saints couple of hours doing some interactive storytelling, washing each other's feet if you would like to, going out in the garden, um, thinking about Jesus, praying in the garden. We're going to sit around a fire outside in the courtyard, think about Jesus, about Peter denying Jesus. So it's going to be interactive storytelling for a couple of hours, chances to reflect to come for as much of it or as little of it as you would like to. If you're going to come and if you want to wash feet, bring a bowl, bring a towel, if you want to go outside, bring a coat, and um, we're going to have some fun. The other services are fairly standard. Um, one change, one mistake I made on the notices is that the Walk of Witness um, and the Priory Good Friday service um, are actually half an hour earlier than normal. So we're going to have to meet at 9.45 at All Saints if you want to walk to the Priory for a 10.30 service. I'll correct that on the notices this week. Um, there is a letter for everybody, and I'm going to explain this at the APCM. Um, you'll, there should be an envelope, uh, a labelled envelope, with your name on it for everyone on our database. If you're not on our database and um, would like to pick up a bundle, then pick up one of these spares there. Um, this is about what I'm going to be talking about at the APCM, but please don't go without picking up your letter. Uh, Real Deal Live, um, we had a fantastic night for, for Fisherman's Tale. Who was at Fisherman's Tale yesterday? Wasn't it brilliant? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, if you missed that, you missed a cracker. So do make sure you come to Real Deal Live and, if possible, bring a friend because this is going to be a great evening of magic and story of God transforming a man's life. Uh, and if you don't already get our mailing and um, we haven't got your details, then please press the Connect With Us button on our website. 
you can register to get our e e email, uh, weekly email sent to you on a Friday through that and um, tell us a little bit more about you. So I think that's the notices today. Can we stand? Today, this Sunday, is a Sunday of particularly of giving thanks. So we're going to start by just speaking out this psalm together. I'll say the bits in yellow, and if you say the bits in white. And as you do, just think, what have you got to be thankful to God for as we gather today? So give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. And we're going to sing our first uh, song. And uh, I'd love the children to come. We've got some uh, instruments. Come and grab your instruments. But we're going to sing, let our praise be your welcome. to you this morning 
we just say, will your fire come down? Will your spirit come down? Will this be such an anointed time where you fill us up to send us out, where you fill the Myers family up to send them out? But we welcome you. We welcome you here in this place. We open our hearts to you this morning. Just come and meet with us in a really special way, we pray. Amen. Do sit down. We're just going to have a, a little time of thinking about what we have to thank God for. And I hope uh, uh, some of you will contribute to that. We've got an open, open mic in a moment. So, um, firstly, of course, we're coming to thank God for the Myers family today. And this was day one. I am sorry for all those people who fell for the April Fool on Friday morning. He didn't really punch the bishop, and he isn't really going to be a bishop. But it got some of you, I know. Um, but I think uh, it's a mark of how much we respect Peter that some people actually believe that someone might go from a curate to a bishop without being an incumbent first. So I'm going to give thanks for the Myers family this morning. You know, I think this is amazing to give thanks for too. You know, this is the Ukrainian school, Terry and Hanka's uh, Ukrainian school, that they've been going two weeks now, that they've set up for 20 Ukrainian refugee children. And thank you to those people who've given um, to that. And I know Terry and Hanka are really grateful. And, you know, in the midst of just the desperate scenes that we've been watching, you know, there's amazing stuff which is happening because God's people are being obedient and serving and welcoming up their homes and their countries and their churches for those. So I think that's to be thankful for. But I want us to have a little bit of time now just to be thankful for our church. And I want to show you a picture now, which was a picture taken exactly a year ago today, on the Sunday a year ago. And I want you just to look at the difference and be grateful. Can you believe, when I saw that picture come up on my phone, I just couldn't quite believe that that was a year ago. That was where we were a year ago. And aren't you glad that we're not quite in that place now? But God's journeyed with us over these last couple of years, which have been difficult, but in the difficulty, God's done amazing things. And we're particularly today going to reflect on last year, the last year, and I, I just would love to offer someone, anyone, a few people, just to share one-sentence things, no more, no preachers, one-sentence things of things that they're grateful for for our church in the last year. So hands up if you want to contribute something and children we'd love you to say some things too this isn't just for the adults this is for all of us so who's going to kick off uh, the church is just such a welcoming place for families and for teenagers which is brilliant and i want to thank you for simon and daisy and and anya and sophie who've been amazing with pathfinders I want to say thank you for the welcome that everyone's given us. We've been here since September and feel, really feel part of the church. It's fantastic. Thank you. Brilliant welcome team. Thank you all those. I'd like to say thank you to the Bereavement Cafe, people from the church. Which has been amazing and really blessed many people. Do you want to say something, Colin? Did you? Were you, did you have your hand up? <laughs> no, okay, sorry, I was going to I want to say thank you for our women's at, Women at Work Life Group on a Friday morning. Hooray! <laughs> Fabulous support. It's brilliant, Anna. I want to say thank you for keeping us all connected through online services. Absolutely. And to praise you, Lord, for the, the joy and the welcome and the openness to you and your life in this place through your people. It's amazing how many new people have just spoken. I want to say thank you to God for bringing us all these amazing new people, which just makes today so much better for me that actually people like you, Joe, are coming in to take over from Peter, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say thank you for the most amazing life group that we're part of that's been led by Peter.
I want to, I'm looking at these, this lovely family at the front and I want to say thank you for early birds, which has been some of my highlights of this last year. I think we had over 20 this morning and then we had Bouncy Castle afterwards. So the early birds have been brilliant, hasn't it? We've loved it. I'd just like to say thank you for the welcome we receive at both churches, All Saints and St Andrews. That's brilliant, isn't it? The way that God is uniting us as churches over the pandemic and particularly this last year, and we'll say a bit more about that then. Oh, Val's got a hand up. Two more, Val and then Tara. I want to say thank you to Derek for all that he's done in the technical, on the technical side. And in fact, all of the tech team, not just Derek, all of the tech team. I just want to um, thank you again for all the, the Zooming services you've done for people not only in Malvern, but further away. My, my mum has enjoyed the services so much. So thank you. Thank you. And I uh, get my mother just also, mum, um, I get her just telling me to say, do say thank you to that minister, because he was great. And who was speaking this time? They were great. Do, do tell them that. And that's, a, that's big praise indeed. So there you go. Um, we have so much... I'm going to regret saying that. Edit, edit out that, that bit, Derek. Um, <laughs> we have so much to be thankful for, so let's just pray and, and thank God. Lord, we thank you for all these things, and we could just go on and on. But we are so grateful for each other, for the way that you've watched over us, for the many, many ways where so many people serve in this place and look after each other and just shine of you to our communities. And we thank you for the privilege of partnering with you in the flourishing of our communities. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together and then we're going to send the children out. So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. As forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen so children you're gonna go off to see helen and have some fun time this morning we'll see you later after the apcm's finished but off you go now and pauline's gonna come and read to us The reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 6 and verses 25 to 34. It's one I practically know by heart, it's so true. <laughs> Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for the final time, let's pray for Peter. Lord, we thank you so much for this man, and we'll say so much more later. But we pray now that you would anoint his words, that you would open our hearts, that you would speak to us and transform us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I um, wept my way through last Sunday at All Saints, so we'll see how today goes, Um, whether the tear ducts are empty or whether they've had a chance to refill. But what a beautiful sight you all are this morning and what a privilege it is again to be here. Fifteen months ago, uh, I got a a phone call from the Archdeacon saying, um, Peter, um, there's a role coming up. It might ha- be Peter shaped. Would you go and have a look? So um, I popped up to uh, the area, uh, had a look, uh, and sort of quite quickly sort of felt it probably wasn't for us. Uh, and very quickly I got a second phone call saying, there's, there's something else. Would you go and have a look at uh, that? And we spent then the next sort of two or three months looking, thinking, praying, discerning, Uh, and eventually reached the decision that that probably wasn't Peter-shaped either. And that has begun uh, a year and a bit of uh, searching, uh, discerning, listening to the Lord, applying, uh, being interviewed at various uh, stages. And there have been moments of anxiety in that, I would guess. But as I look back, um, I feel assured and confident that actually most of that journey, which could have been quite uncertain and quite uh, disruptive, was actually very peaceful because we were assured that God had a plan for us. We knew that God had brought us, the the journey for us to arrive here was so God-inspired and ordained. We knew that God would have something for us. And, uh, you know, I'm so not perfect and fear and rejection is, 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 is the things that really do stretch me. But actually, I reflect back and think, Lord, thank you for your peace as that you've carried us through the last year. And that's my journey uh, a little bit for you or my message this morning is a sort of simple and encouraging, I hope, uh, message and invitation a plea for you to continue to be kingdom seekers and God seekers as you travel forward. We heard in that, uh, that scripture, Jesus saying, do not worry, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what is worry and anxiety and fear? It's, it's, it's fear about the uncertainty and the unknown, isn't it? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's where anxiety and and fear comes from. And I just want to encourage you, Jesus says, do not worry, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek him first and don't worry about tomorrow. God will do everything. He knows how precious you are and I am. He knows how wonderful you are and I am. He knows what you need and what I need. What does Jesus say? Don't worry, seek first the kingdom of God. And what is a posture of seeking? Just think for a moment. What is seeking meaning? It's a posture of intentionality, isn't it? It's proactivity. There's movement. It's not just about sitting back and letting life happen to you. There is something about being intentional in seeking. And that's the call that Jesus uh, does for us. Seek first the kingdom of God. And so what does that actually mean? 
What is that seeking and what, how do we seek the kingdom of God? It's about our prayer focus. It's about searching the scriptures and dwelling in the scriptures. It's about a relationship with God. And it's about in being intentional in that. Intentional in your prayer life. Intentional in your relationship. Intentional in your reading your Bible and knowing the character of God. The God who loves you. The God who delights in you. The God who knows what you need. I'm sure we're familiar with two scriptures. Peter uh, uh, chapter 5. Cast out your, um, cast your anxieties. Often cast your burdens onto him because he cares for you. And in Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Do not worry. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We are all in a time of change, aren't we? We're about to have our APCM. Uh, We obviously see massive amounts of change as a family, but there'll be change in all sorts of uh, your personal lives. We're in a change as a church, and the APCM, uh, Dave is going to talk about all sorts of um, uh, changes and reflections about leadership and personnel. And you just have to look around the world. There's so much change. You know, there's nothing you and I, practically, we can feel so helpless about what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. But don't underestimate the power of prayer. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Seek first the kingdom of God and don't be anxious. Now, I couldn't leave... um, this place or be able to share a a, a final psalm without presenting an icon. Now, I probably couldn't have told you what an icon was four years ago, but the joy of uh, the Reverend Paul Hunt, who amongst our community has taught me much, and uh, I've gained uh, uh, so much from his insight and his uh, discipleship in this area. Now, you, many of you will, uh, I hope, uh, be, have seen this before, this icon. It comes in various forms, but it's the harrowing of hell. And what you have is Jesus in the center, and he's stretching his hands out, and he's pulling Adam and Eve, representing you and I and humanity, out of the grave. I wonder what graves that we dwell in. That could be hopelessness or despair um, uh, or, or, or uncertainty. There could be so many graves that dwell. And underneath those um, graves is, is, is a torture, um, uh, instruments of torture and hell and death. And yet what this icon is showing is Jesus pulling us out of the darkness that we dwell in. But I was introduced to this about four years ago, having just arrived by um, Paul. And the thing that has always struck me right from the beginning, I was captured by zooming in to the way that Jesus holds the hands of Adam and Eve. And this is just, uh, it's actually from a different icon. You can see it slightly differently, but the posture is the same. Now, can you see how Jesus' hands is grasping the wrists of, um, of Adam representing there? Now, if you and I uh, were stretching out to one another, we'd, we'd, we'd probably hold our hands like that and hold each other and to pull, um, uh, pull each other. And we're both involved in exerting a force of, of, of stretching out. Does that make sense? If you're holding like, like that. But here in this icon, you've got Jesus holding the wrist of the person. And therefore, the person is not contributing to the force to pull out of the grave. Jesus is pulling us out of our despair or our difficulties or our uncertainties. It's Jesus that's pulling us. But what is the character, the, the representation of Adam doing? Adam and you represented there are stretching out. We're lifting our hands. We're seeking. 
It's the posture of seeking Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Jesus reaches down, plucks us out and brings us into his glory. That's the image of the gold behind Jesus. Lifting us up into life. Lifting us up into hope. Seek first the kingdom of God. Do not worry. But there is a posture of seeking. Stretch out your hands in the coming weeks and months to Jesus. And he will be there for you. Last uh, week was... um, uh, uh, Paul again led a uh, Lenten sort of quiet day retreat, which was um, again very very special. Uh, uh, again, poetry not my happy place at all, uh, but again a place that I'm learning and growing and uh, and connecting with again uh, because so often to Paul. And at that Lent um, uh, reflection, he. Uh, spoke a or or shared with us a poem called The Peace of the Wild Things uh, by Wendell Berry. And I want to read it to you uh, and then just point out something from it. So this is a poem, The Peace of the Wild Things. Actually, you might want to close your eyes and just uh, uh, picture the imagery that comes through this. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and children's lives may be, I go down and lie down with the wood drake, sorry, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and I am free. I was so struck. What you've got in this poem is someone who, at the simplest thing, wakes up in anxiety, worried about their life and and their children's lives, and they go down to the quiet, still waters and watch the ducks and where the heron is and realize that they don't worry. They're just getting on with the now. And in that moment, he finds peace and he is free. And there is that, oh, well, here we go. I was privileged enough um, just 10 days ago to go on retreat to the Brecon Beacons. And there's a a, a lake there. And I was so struck having heard that poem and then to be in the lakes. And there was the mandrake, the herons in the still water. And it spoke so much to me about that verse where you come down to the water in this poem and the author says, I come into the peace of the wild things who do not tax their lives with forethoughts of grief. Isn't that an extraordinary statement? The wild things are not worried about tomorrow, the uncertainties. They're just living in the now trusting and knowing the now. They don't tax their lives with grief or uncertainty, worry or anxiety. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethoughts of grief. I come into the presence of the still water and I am free. So as there is change amongst us and around us, my encouragement and my invitation for all of us is to continue to seek first the kingdom of God. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. God knows what you need as a church community, where the resources comes, who's going to fill those holes, what's going on in your life, what's going on in the world. But let's be God seekers, kingdom seekers, 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. going to have a chance to respond to that and to say, yes, God, I want to be a kingdom seeker. And we're going to just um, sing uh, uh, that new great LICC song, We Seek Your Kingdom Here. But today there's a few special pictures, which I hope will bring it a little bit closer to home. So would you stand? And just as we sing this, it's a way of us saying to God, I, I'm I'm up there, I'm holding my hand up. I'm being a kingdom seeker in this coming year, in this place, as you've called me to. We seek your kingdom throughout every sphere.
I think that just shows so well, doesn't it, what God has called us to and the huge amount of different places that you guys are in seeking to bring God's kingdom and be obedient to his calling. So I just invite you to let us all just commission ourselves again to do this for this coming year, to seek God's kingdom in the places that he's put us. So just maybe if you want to, just hold out your hands as a sign of saying, I'm here and I'm available, Lord, for you to use me. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would anoint each one of us afresh to serve you in the places you've called us to. That you will equip us, that you will strengthen us, that you will give us all that we need to be all you've called us to. And in these places and in these places which we haven't shown, may your kingdom come. Let's say our St. Andrews and All Saints prayer together on the screen. In the name of Jesus, we bless St. Andrews and All Saints and all the other churches of our town that we will encounter the transforming presence of God more deeply. In the name of Jesus, we bless our young people that they will grow and be filled to overflowing with your spirits and shine for you in their schools, with their families, in their families. In the name of Jesus, we bless our communities, that they will flourish with your life and values, and that lives will be transformed and people's hearts softened to receive the love of God. Pour out your spirit on us all, and teach us what it means to walk with you. Amen. Amen. That's us commissioned. And now we're commissioned the Myers. Do sit down and uh, if the Myers family could come up. And I just would love just a few people who might like to just lay hands on them and pray for them just to come now. Do, don't be shy, just come up and what we can do is what they do when they're, when they're Christian bishops. So they, uh, they lay hands on each other and if they can't reach the people, then they lay hands on the people who lay hands on them and they pass the blessing along. But I just, um, there's an open mic here, so just a few people who would like to kick off and pray. grateful for is that we have seen the presence of God amongst us in this family and we pray your blessing your presence to be amongst them in greater and deeper uh, more powerful ways Lord we pray that as they go to live amongst and lead the people of Dorset we pray your presence would go with them and that they would lead in ways that are anointed and draw many to you in Jesus name Amen Lord we pray for peace for them over the next few days in this chaotic time of moving and we ask Lord that you be right ahead of them right beside them right before them right over all of them we pray for new friendships for new relationships. And we pray for Alice, Lord, as she starts her new school, that you'll be right with her. Help Emma as she homeschools. Give her peace and help her to know um, what to teach. Help them to have joy and enjoy being together as they start their new life. Amen. Dear Lord, just want to pray for James as um, he continues his gap year and then uh, moves on, Lord, and um, just pray for all the children as uh, the different houses getting used to different areas and, and bless them, Lord, and pray that you'll be alongside them, Lord. In your name, amen. amen. Yes, we thank you so much for this family and what they've brought and what they've given to us. They don't even know what they've given to us altogether, but we thank you for them, Lord, and we pray your blessing on them. And as they settle into their new home, their new church, and their new 
friends and friendships. So the Lord bless them and keep them. The Lord make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. I can't remember the rest. <laughs> the Lord lift up his countenance upon them and give them peace. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful example that this family have been to us in modeling how to follow Jesus. We thank you for the their humor and their hospitality and we thank you lord that um, you love them so much and we pray very much that you would give them times of peace and rest in the turmoil of moving of setting up a new home thank you for the way that uh, peter and emma uh, welcome people to their homes and we thank you for their neighbors around them i've met them last week Peter was knocking on the door of, of neighbours there, just saying hello. What a wonderful example, Father, how to be a good neighbour. I pray that you would strengthen those friendships, that they would be able to call upon those neighbours in times of trouble and in times of joy. And we pray that they would um, continue to shine your light uh, in, in their community. Thank you for them, Father. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for the way that you brought Peter and his lovely family to us at such a precisely appropriate time and to meet specific needs at a particular time here and for all the way that you have blessed us through them. And Lord, we know that there are people down there in Dorset who have got specific needs and that you're taking them there because you have just the same crafted purpose for them to serve and bless the new people there that they're going to meet and so we pray that you'll just endow them with every strength and grace and discernment and fortitude that they need in this new stage of their lives and that they may find that you've gone there ahead of them and that you're there to meet them in jesus name amen Lord, we thank you that Peter found that time when you guided him to step off the boat and into your service. And we just thank you for his presence among us, the support and the strength, the rock-like nature of his ability to help in times of difficulty. Lord, we just bless you for this family and thank you for all that they have done here in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to anoint you guys with oil. And then we're going to sing over you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. They're going to stay here. Everyone else apart from the music group can sit down. And we're going to finish by singing I Speak Jesus. And we're going to sing it over this family, but we're also sing it over each other. And we're singing it over our community too. So they're going to just stay here until I give them the nods to walk down the aisle. And then they're going to just allow you guys to sing over them and bless them. And when they get to the back, pity you're off duty. speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind and there is peace within your presence I 
we go into our APCM now, we continue to worship you through that. 
But we say, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us now and always. Amen. Thank you. That's stage one done. We're going to have a three-minute turnaround, and the APCM will start in three minutes. If, you're, uh, if you are staying, then great. If you need to go, go. Um, we are really happy for anyone, even if you're not on the electoral roll, to come and be a, a participant. Well, come and be an observer. If you're on the electoral roll, you can participate, but anyone is welcome to stay along. But we'll be starting in three minutes.